Hey everyone, this is G.P. Walsh from omschool.ca and um, I wanted to do some tapping today on a really important subject, namely toxic shame and how to be free of it. So I want you to just start tapping. Sometimes I do formal tapping, sometimes I don't. I find that if I'm even explaining a subject to uh, help liberate our minds so we're not stuck on a particular belief about something, that tapping while you're just listening actually helps the message bypass a lot of the uh, arguments and, and opinions and disagreements of our mind and sink into the whole nervous system because tapping is a physical way of communicating to the body through touch that it's safe. Now what happens to the body when, it, when it's safe? When it feels, when it senses that the environment is safe? Not we just say it is or we think it is, but it senses that it is. Well, it lets go of stress. It lets go of tension. And in that environment, it can begin to let go of all sorts of things. It's like when you do a fast, and at first the fast is very uncomfortable um, because the body is now using that opportunity to get rid of toxins and all sorts of stuff it just doesn't need anymore. Well, our, our emotional system works the same way. So now, you may not be aware of the kind of toxic shame that, um, because it, it exists on a very subtle level. It's not necessarily the, the shame or guilt we feel about something. It's partly that. There's a sting, right, when you remember something. Oh, God, I, what was I thinking? Why did I say that? These are all very difficult and unpleasant memories. But we would actually be able to let go, to just learn from our mistakes and let go, were it not for a deeper, more toxic shame. The form that toxic shame takes is it, it comes in a deep inner conviction, a silent conviction even, a silent assumption that says, I am inherently broken, flawed, defective, and it's my own fault. I want you to just be with that for a second. I'm broken, I'm flawed, and it's my fault. Remember, if you were mistreated at all as a child, and we all were to a certain extent, none of us escaped that. Some of you may be even very severely. Then the only conclusion the young child can draw, because his parents are, are gods, they're, they can do no wrong. So if, since they're perfect, if they're mad at me or hurting me, there's something wrong with me. It's all my fault. And that's the birthplace of this kind of toxic shame that can really restrict our lives. So I want to do a little very simple tapping with you. Let's start on the karate chop point. I'll do the traditional style. Even though I'm carrying all of this toxic shame around, Maybe it's possible that I could just love and accept myself as I am anyway. Even though I probably am broken, and it probably was all my fault, I'm, I'm just choosing to accept myself as I am. Says maybe it wasn't. Maybe this is just the way I am. And I'm going to love and accept myself anyway, at least be open to it. So even though I am carrying this around, and have been, it's been influencing so many aspects of my life, so many regrets, so many embarrassing moments, so much humiliation, I'm choosing to consider the possibility that maybe, maybe I can love myself anyway, despite all of that even if nothing ever changes. 
Let's tap to the points now. All of this toxic shame, the shame I'm carrying around, wanting to be small, hide, don't let anybody see me. Don't take too many risks. You might get exposed. And it's all my fault. I was born this way, and it's all my fault. Hmm. Born this way and my fault? Can't be both of those. I was either born this way and I'm defective, nothing I could do about it, or I wasn't born that way and it was my fault. I screwed it up. I messed the whole thing up. What if it's neither? What if I, I wasn't born defective and what if none of this was my fault? What if I'm not to blame? What if there was nothing wrong with me but my parents just for, for whatever reason could not accept me as I am? Maybe not even see me as I am. Maybe I was a creative born into a house of dullards. They, they had no idea. If the next Mozart is born in a coal mining family, nobody's going to know it. So maybe I was just planted in the wrong garden. Or at least a garden that wasn't hospitable to me. <clears throat> and I'm not responsible for that. I didn't choose it. I didn't look down from above and say, oh yeah, I want that family. It just happened. So I'm not to blame for that. And all these feelings that are in me, the shame, this self-judgment, criticism, I didn't create that. I was taught to be that way. I was taught to criticize myself. What if I'm not to blame? What if I'm actually innocent? Oh no, can't be true. I gotta be to blame, right? I've been acting out like I'm to blame. I've been trying to fix things like I'm to blame. I've been working on myself relentlessly for years, trying every technique I could possibly find. So I must be broken and to blame, right? Well, if I assumed I was, I would certainly act that way. If, if I really believed that to be true, I would act it out. It would become my lived experience. But that doesn't make it true. <laughs> that just makes it the way I've lived my life. What if it isn't true? What if I've just been acting out a very deeply held false assumption that was planted in my nervous system before I could ever do anything about it or even know that it was happening? Could I accept my original innocence? Could I accept my blamelessness? Could I accept the gift of total release from shame? I don't even know if that's possible, but if it happens, count me in. I acknowledge that these things have been lodged in my system for a very long time. So long that I've just never questioned whether they were true or not. And now I'm opening my whole body, my nervous system, my energy system, every part of me, to look again, to look closer, 
and ask, is this really true? And to dissolve completely out of my entire life anything that we see is no longer valid, well, was never valid. I would let that happen. I just want to thank myself for being willing to consider this. I want to thank my nervous system for taking care of me for all of these years, making sure I was safe, bending itself into knots to make sure that I got my needs met, even though it had to do a lot of really uncomfortable and unnatural things to do that. Thank you for protecting me 24-7. Thank you. I love you. Take a breath. Now, if you notice, I wasn't stopping in between. I did some on that, but sometimes I just kind of keep going because remember I said in the beginning, you don't actually have to say it all. I, you don't have to go through the the whole process and the presence uh, tapping that I do, we don't say anything. We just breathe and tap and feel. And so you don't have to, I don't do EFT so strictly that I say something, you repeat, say something, you repeat. Sometimes I do. Some, but I've found it's not really all that necessary because the message gets in. You can feel it in your heart. And sometimes, sometimes it's actually even hard for people to say. They want to, you want to just sit back and be taken care of. And so when I do that, it gives me the opportunity to just, dude, you're off duty. You sit back. You take it easy. Let, I'll do the heavy lifting. It's not all that heavy. <laughs> so I hope you like that. Um, please leave some comments, like and, uh, like and share. And if you like this, you can even reach out on Patreon at patreon.com slash gpwalsh to help me keep it going. So... So good to be with you all and look forward to more. Namaste.